So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to draw a potato peeler using Onshape. Uh, we're going to build upon the skills we've learned in previous tutorials, uh, whilst also introducing some more complex tutorials to kind of improve your Onshape abilities. Uh, so as with before, we're going to select the top plane, uh, click N on the keyboard, uh, which then allows us to see that plane in 2D. Clicking sketch, this time around I'm going to use a center point rectangle. So I'm clicking on the little drop down arrow and I'm clicking center rectangle. Before drawing though, I'm also going to select this construction button as well. So both are then highlighted. Clicking from the origin, I'm going to drag that out and draw a random size rectangle. You'll notice that the bottom line has a dimension ready to be typed in. We don't need to click in there, we can just type in our measurement, in this case 150, we're gonna hit enter on our keyboard, that then moves it to the left hand side, and I want that measurement to be 70, and enter. Next thing is to then put construction line back off, and I'm gonna swap that back to a corner rectangle. I'm gonna zoom in to make this as big as I can on screen for you, um, and I'm gonna to start to draw my peeler. So first of all, I'm gonna draw a little rectangle. Now a tool that we haven't used much of is this tool here, which is called the spline tool. This will allow me to draw the handle of my peeler. So I'm gonna start inside this rectangle and I'm gonna click several times. So the idea being, this is me now drawing my handle of my peeler. These then becoming the finger grooves. And don't worry too much about placement initially because these can be changed later on. And to end that, we're going to hit Escape on my keyboard. Uh, at this point, we're going to use the Trim tool. So the scissors up here. And just like with a rubber when using a pencil and paper, if you hold left click as if you were putting a rubber on a bit of paper, everywhere I can zoom over, that will then delete that line, leaving me with the starting shape of my pillar. I now want to remove a part around here, which is where my blade would go. I'm going to use a three-point arc for this. So I'm going to click somewhere near the top and then somewhere near the bottom. And what I'll then do is click that to the point where I'm happy with that sort of gap that I'll end up with. Back to the trim tool. Again, rubbing out what I don't need anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. What I'll also look at now is potentially adding some kind of radius edges. Uh, or in this case, the word they're going to use is the sketch fillet tool. So I'm going to click on one line and I'm going to click on another line. And you'll notice that R5 appears on screen. I can drag this to make it smaller or larger. Or what I can do is I can click on that button there, double click, and we'll go for a 7.5 millimeter radius. Now, if I continue to then select a few of these, it says eight, it's just been rounded up. I'm gonna click again on here to here. I'm gonna go from there to there. Oops. I'm gonna take that off. And it should remember and allow me to do there as well. So if you wanna check that, as I said, 7.5, sometimes it's rounding it up, others down, I'm not sure why. Hit enter. Now, at this point, I'm quite happy with the shape that I've started with. So at the moment, it's all two-dimensional. So using right-click, I'm just kind of visualizing how that looks. And then go into uh, Extrude. And as with before, we're going to go for Add Material. So we can do this manually, or we can use the Depth button over here. So 20 millimeters is the thickness of the styrofoam that you've used as part of your project. So I'm going to replicate the material that you've used and I'm going to make that 20 and tick it off. So you'll notice now I have a sketch and an extrusion and it's a feature tree on the left hand side. I want to add a hole where you might hang your peeler. Uh, so I'm going to click on that surface, again hitting N on my keyboard. I'm going to go into sketch, circle tool, and I'm going to place this somewhere around here. I'm not too fussed about sizes because again, I can change those by just typing in, hitting enter. And at this case, going back to the extrude button, but rather than adding material, we're gonna move over to this feature, remove, and we'll just make sure that it goes all the way through by dragging that through, oops. Dragging that down, 
and ticking it off. So we've got our hole for hanging at that point there. Now other tools to look at using. Um, so we can use the fillet tool, which we'll find up here. Uh, we're going to add a nice rounded edge to the peeler. Now I can select the whole face, but you'll notice it goes this shade of red at this point. It might be that I can change the size and it might allow me to go for a very small fillet. Still doesn't like it because it's got a red line over here. So I'm going to cancel that and I'll start that feature again. So I'm going to go into fillet. Rather than selecting the face, I'm going to select individual lines. Uh, three millimeters. I can probably increase that. We'll try five. Now clicking on the screen allows me to see, as you can tell, where that radius will be. And the more lines that I then select, the wider that radius of fillet will be applied. And I'm going to do that both on top and the bottom surfaces. And being careful not to select, it doesn't like this arc. And then I will tick that off. So already it's starting to look hopefully a little bit more like a peeler. Uh, one or two other features to add in. Uh, so on some of the potato peelers that you analyzed earlier in the year, uh, they had the little kind of eye removers for those parts of the potatoes that you tend to kind of peel out before you cook. And so I'm going to draw one of those on this face. So again, hitting N on my keyboard. I'm going to zoom in so this is nice and big. And we're going to sketch, circle. And it's quite useful to watch what happens here. So I'm going to go into the corner and go across until it tells me I'm in the center. So then I can do that. But I'm also going to do the same from the left-hand side as well. What it will then do is it will allow me to make sure that that is drawn in the center. So I'm going to hit 8 and enter. But I only want half of this piece. So I'm going to cut this in half. So again, I haven't clicked yet. I'm just going to the center. And you can see the dotted line. Then I'm going to start go all the way across and then I'm going to move and get the trim tool to remove that top part of that piece. What I now want to do is go into the uh, feature extrude. Uh, again, I'm going to add material, clearly too much. We're going to move that down. Um, but the shape at the moment looks a little bit wrong. So what I'm going to introduce here is the draft feature. So if I make this a larger number, so we'll try 10 to start with you'll notice that the draft makes that piece bigger, which is not really what I want. So what I can do is opposite direction, and you can start to see then that looks a little bit more like the eye remover that your peelers have had in the past. So we can try that, we can try 12 maybe, until we're happy with that, and try 15. There we go, that looks a little bit more like the part that was on some of the peelers that you've analyzed at the start of the year. Now, in terms of the drawing, so I'll go back to this right hand feature, which I mentioned before, it allows me to see my model in 3D quite quickly. Um, it's worth noting that these planes, you don't really need them at the moment. So you can go into here in the feature and just click the little eye, put a line through it. And now what we can see is just the peeler that we've drawn. Um, one last part that I'd like to show you before finishing this tutorial is the application of color. Uh, so to do that, in this sketch, we're going to right click. You'll notice in the bottom we've got edit appearance and edit appearance to face. So to start off with, I'm going to apply color to the whole part. So this is the second of the three options. And I'm going to go for a light shade of green. We'll go for that. We'll take that off. If I now go to here and right click edit appearance of the face rather than the part, uh, we'll create like a rubberized texture maybe. What I can now do here is either select or deselect. Uh, for me, that's probably where the grip would go. It might be that you want to add a bit of color on some of these parts. It might be that this is an additional bit of plastic. It might be that that there, for some reason, has some texture to it as well. I can tick that off, go back to my view, checking it out from all the various angles. As I said, for me personally, I use the right click and zoom around quickly to test things out. But once we're happy with what we've drawn, that there gives us a nice isometric view of my drawing. And that there is a peeler, which hopefully you can use uh, to help you design and make your own peeler later on in the lesson.